and Shoebury Ness. This train is formed of eight coaches. Change at Upminster from services to Pemberley Park and Longford. Wow, that's a beautiful view down here from Raynham Station, looking out towards the marshes, which is where I'm heading today. Well, I'm already confused because it's saying Raynham Marsh is in the opposite direction. But I'm actually going to walk along the, uh, the river towards uh, Purfleet. So RSPB Purfleet is this way. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at rain and marshes on the map and planned this walk and then just not done it for one reason or another. So it's a really beautiful Friday morning. I haven't got all day, so this seems about right. It seems perfect. You know, I went to get out of London a little bit to the edges. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to this today. Traffic backed up there on the A13. I think there must have been an accident. Completely stationary. So here we are on the edge of uh, Raynham Marshes. Raynham Marsh, uh, Wennington Marsh, and then we go down to Purfleet, and this is a, an RSPB nature reserve. I was a member of the RSPB when I was a kid, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. I was about, I don't know, seven or eight years old. I've still got the badge at home somewhere, and I still have uh, all the bird books that I, I then consequently got given for birthdays and Christmas presents as encyclopedias of birds. So this is said to be one of London's last surviving, truly sort of ancient landscapes. Actually without the pylons in the background there. Stretching right back into antiquity, into prehistory. dead stems of uh, what I think is cow parsley. Really beautiful, aren't they? It's such a beautiful morning. Here we are, so, uh, was it the, today? The 3rd of November. It's actually quite warm, I'm overdressed. Well, what a beautiful morning. Look, I'm sat here in a t-shirt. 3rd of November. This is amazing. It's probably going to snow next week, isn't it? Um, this bit where I am here now isn't, I don't think, the official RSPB nature is there, but that's slightly over near a Purfleet. But uh, part of this area, I think particularly the bit where the fenced off nature reserve bit used to be uh, a Ministry of Defence firing range, which is interesting. And it only became a nature reserve about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And look as well, you can see, when I, if you walk this way, you've got an enormous landfill site, Raynham landfill site. And I guess this was the area here that was the firing range. It really is a beautiful landscape, isn't it? It's been sort of carved out of recent horror and reclaimed by nature. I mean, we're so lucky to have places like this on our doorstep in London, particularly if you live in East London. I mean, for me to get here today, it's a six minute train journey from Leytonstone to Barking, and then from Barking to here, to, to Raynham, is another nine minutes. It's 15 minutes from Leytonstone. Yeah, uh, you know, it's more or less the same sort of travel time as it would take you to get to Stratford. Maybe slightly longer, but <laughs> you can be here instead of at Westfield, <laughs> put it that way. Ah, and the first glimpse of the Thames. 
gazing across at uh, the outskirts of Erith, the industrial fringe of Erith. So these must be the concrete barges. See how they've uh, been adopted by the birds, the one there on the far side. It's nearly completely submerged, it's uh, a haven for birds, as is this one here actually, nearer to the shore. Look at all this crap down here, all these plastic bottles washed up on the shore. This is where it ends up. If you're interested in the Thames Estuary, I highly recommend reading uh, Rachel Lichtenstein's book, Estuary. Uh, and there's a lovely bit about the last working barge, the last working sail barge, actually, on, on the Thames. Uh, I, I did an event with Rachel last year, about this time last year, actually, at the to Tap. And they used to moor the prison hulks out here, out here along the Thames Estuary, where the prisoners would have been awaiting transportation to Australia. It's so beautiful to be out here. And there's not a soul around as well. So this is the Raynham landfill site. According to the little information board back there, it's going to become a country park. It's quite a transformation, isn't it? And you can see that quite prominently from the other side of the Thames. I mean, look how close we are to the river. So there's another big landfill site out uh, just uh, at Tilbury, and there you can see where the, uh, the estuarine erosion. My friend Professor Kate Spencer has done extensive work on that, on the way it's polluting the, the river. And that's uh, a pattern, actually across the country. She's done a big study on that. I'll put a link to that below. What you've also got happening down here is the uh, earth excavated for the digging of the super sewer is uh, brought out along the Thames and dumped in the estuary further along. Some very deep sections out there. I think one of them is called Knock John, Long Deep, things like that. Or Black Deep, I think it is. I actually spoke to a couple of uh, Dutch sailors on their, on their boat out there, actually, and they were just waiting for instructions to go and pick up a load of dirt drop it in the Thames and that was their life, <laughs> sitting at Erith Pier waiting for instructions. So this is a great cold harbour. be completely wrong it does look like it seems to be part of the landfill operations but I might have that completely wrong and you can see that this is Cold Harbour Point here that we're walking around this is a navigation beacon here at Cold Harbour Point the Thames is apparently quite a difficult river to, to navigate you really got to know what you're doing in the past, plenty of uh, ships have come a cropper in the Thames estuary. Rachel Lichtenstein relates a number of those stories in her book, Estuary. Look at this here. Three old root masters, eh? Aren't they beautiful? Just sat here beside the river, between Raynham and Purfleet.
So I think this stretch of the Thames ahead of us is known as the Erith Rands. Using the hive mind of the internet, any idea what this peculiar kind of turquoise rock is? Greeny turquoise is here. Some of it here, ceramic I suppose, isn't it? It's probably just broken ceramics. But it's in old lumps, look. It's lying around here on the broken shore. a lot of it. So I walked along the path there on the uh, other side of the Thames from Erith down there to the Dartford Creek. That's a really magical walk. That was it. When was that? It was August uh, 2012, so just over five years ago. It was for chapter three of my book, This Other London, Adventures in the Overlook City. go around Averley Bay and then that's the end of the walk here at Purfley. Great salting behind me. One of the uh, other information boards back there did show that there was the remains of a primordial forest along here. Um, that would mirror what's on the other side, actually, around Anchor Bay, just out of Erith. At low tide, you see the, uh, the fossilised tree trunks from the uh, ancient forest, which I guess was the forest of Kent, which came all the way down to the shore. So I suppose it must have also been the same sort of environment on the other side here. Strange landscape here, isn't it? Averley Bay, these rocks down here, I guess. There must have been a wharf here, or maybe this was part of the old MOD, Ministry of Defence shooting range. And of course, you know, Plumstead Marsh is on the other side, just further around the Thames. Also a big Ministry of Defence uh, testing range there, firing range linked to the uh, Royal Arsenal Armaments Works at Woolwich. Well, thanks for keeping me company on this walk around Rainham Marshes, River Thames. It's nice to have you to kind of chat to and, you know, reflect, share things with you next walk i'm going to try and work off that list of suggestive walks you gave me a brilliant list of places winchmore hill was on there rainer's lane for jag and stew great walk suggested by john leach uh, from south acton to i can't remember the end point of that walk now john is it barnes um loads more all the other ones oh, anyway there were loads they were really good ones peckham that was a good suggestion i want to go back there yeah, so uh, who knows, I've got a really strong pang to get back up the Lee Valley, it's really strange, it's always with me actually, if I go more than a month without going out there, I get a real strong yearning. So this is the RSPB Nature Reserve here, there's a visitor centre which apparently has a nice cafe, and I might just sample it now. Look at this, this is the RSPB Visitor Centre. What an amazing building. I love it. Thank you. 